Magic Tree House, Book Number Thirty Three, Narwhal on a Sunny Night, by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapter Three, Unicorns of the Sea. The narwhals were bounding through the water. Foamy waves washed over the ice. I wrote about narwhals in my report," said Annie. "They're some of the most mysterious creatures on earth." She ran down the pebbly shore to get a closer look. Clutching the book and his bag, Jack ran after her. "They're called the unicorns of the sea," Annie shouted over her shoulder. "I get it," called Jack. Their long horns looked just like the horns of unicorns. The narwhals arched out of the water to breathe the fresh air. As they exhaled, puffs of mist burst from their blowholes like sneezes. Annie stopped running. Their horns are really tusks, and almost all narwhals with tusks are male. She said, panting. And the tusk is a super long tooth. It can be as long as ten feet. No kidding, a ten foot tooth," said Jack. "What does the tooth do?" He'd heard of narwhals before, but he didn't know much about them. No one knows for sure," said Annie. "Scientists hardly ever see narwhals, but we just got here, and there they are. I don't believe it." "We're lucky," said Jack. He opened their book. He found a section on narwhals and read aloud, "Narwhals are mysterious whales that live most of their lives in the dark sea. They can dive deeper than any other mammal and stay underwater for twenty-five minutes. No narwhal has ever survived in captivity." "That's odd," said Jack. "Most animals live longer in captivity. They get plenty of food, and they don't get killed by predators." I know," said Annie. "But when narwhals are captured and put in aquariums, they don't live long. They need to be free." She and Jack watched the narwhals dive deeper into the water. Their large, heart-shaped tails flashed above the surface. Then the creatures disappeared from sight. Jack read more. Like most whales. Narwhals communicate underwater by using a variety of sounds, such as clicks, whistles, and squeaks. Scientists put recorders in the sea," said Annie, "and they hear all these weird sounds, but they can't figure out what narwhals are saying or how they can hear at such long distances. Look, they're back," said Jack. The narwhals had popped to the surface. Several were swimming upside down. Some were pushing each other around. Others waved their tusks and tapped them together. Why are they tapping their tusks? said Jack. They're having a chat, said Annie. Jack laughed. Actually, scientists say they might use their tusks to attract mates or gather information, said Annie. As Jack watched the narwhals bob up and down in the water, he tried to count them. One, two, three, four. In the middle of his count, seabirds began to screech overhead. The narwhals made loud whooshing sounds. They thrashed around in the water. "What's wrong?" said Annie. "That," said Jack. A tall fin was gliding across the bay. It looked like a black flag. "A shark!" cried Annie. "No, that's way bigger than a shark fin," said Jack. Suddenly, a giant whale burst out of the waves. It had a black back and a white belly. It was as big as a school bus. The whale crashed down into the water. An orca, a killer whale, cried Annie. And there's more than one, said Jack. At least four other giant black fins appeared in the bay. The killer whales were headed straight. For the herd of narwhals. Chapter four. Stand back. Go, guys, go! Annie shouted to the narwhals. She raced to the shoreline. Jack ran with her. 
Go, 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 he yelled as loudly as he could. The narwhals dove under the surface of the water again. The orcas took off after them, but one of the huge predators swam toward Jack and Annie. Whoa, said Jack, pulling Annie back from the edge of the sea. Suddenly, there was a flurry of splashes and whooshing sounds. What's happening, said Jack. That orca is chasing a narwhal, cried Annie. A small narwhal had separated from his herd. He was swimming toward a row of icebergs about 30 feet offshore. The orca is still coming, said Annie. The giant orca kept chasing the narwhal. Hurry, cried Jack. The narwhal escaped through a passage in the row of icebergs. He swam into a pool of shallow water. The orca was too big to swim through the opening. It crashed against the huge mounds of ice. Some of the ice splintered and broke off in chunks. The orca tried to swim under the icebergs, but the water was too shallow. It smashed against the barrier again, but the passage was still too narrow. Finally, the killer whale swam away. Yay, said Annie. Jack sighed with relief. The narwhal was alone in the pool of water. They're gone, Jack called to him. You can go now, go. Hurry, before they come back, yelled Annie. Find your friends, shouted Jack. As they spoke, more ice shifted and fell. A chunk of fallen ice now completely blocked the passage that led back out to deep water. The narwhal circled inside the shallow pool. Surrounded by packed ice, he was trapped. Oh no, he can't get out, said Annie. Stand back, someone shouted behind them. Move away. Jack and Annie whirled around. A boy with shoulder-length red hair stood on some rocks above them. He looked as young as Annie, but he was holding a huge spear. Whoa, hi, said Jack. Who are you? The boy scowled. He wore a red tunic with a rope around his waist, leather pants, and boots. His spear was made of wood and had a sharp metal blade. Maybe his parents work at a research station, thought Jack. Maybe he likes to dress in costumes and play with ancient weapons. Move away, he is mine, the boy said. What do you mean, yours? said Jack. He's not anybody's, said Annie. The boy strode down the slope toward the water. He raised his spear, aiming it at the narwhal. No, stop, what are you doing, said Jack. He charged at the boy and tried to take his spear away. The boy lost his grip and dropped it. Jack grabbed the spear. It was so heavy he could barely lift it. What kind of kid carries around something like this, he wondered. Give it back, the boy said. He reached for his spear, but Annie jumped between him and Jack. Stop, she said. Why do you want to hurt that narwhal? What's wrong with you? His horn is worth a fortune. Everyone knows that, said the boy. That's a terrible reason, said Annie. You can't kill him for his horn, said Jack. Why not, said the boy. He stared at Jack with fierce blue eyes. Because narwhals are special, said Annie. They're mysteries of nature. They know secrets we'll never know. They hear things we'll never hear. They talk in a language we'll never understand. Get it? The boy looked from Jack to Annie. He took a deep breath and stepped to the water's edge. He stared at the narwhal as if seeing the creature for the first time. Then he turned back to Jack and Annie. I will help you free him, he said. Thank you, said Annie. Here, you can have this back, said Jack. He gave the boy his spear. How can we free him, asked Annie. We will go to him together, said the boy. Come with me, 